Uh, this is Fly and Ryan Burke. If you want to find out what's going on in the world of independent wrestling, check out Wrestling Cheers podcast. Taking your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And welcome back to Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, even if you are a diabetic, just like myself. And who am I? I am your host. I am Heavy Set, and this is wrestling cheers where we like to go into depth sometimes about things going on in the northeast ohio independent wrestling scene we preview shows we review shows and sometimes we even have interviews in this well this is an interview slash preview for a show next week normally you know like we do the aiw stuff it is the weekend or you know the, the next weekend after the episode but well we wanted to give fans a little bit more time to check out this product so you're going to get a whole week before this show, Dropkick Diabetes 4, which is Sunday, July 22nd, 2018. We'll get more on that in a second. But back to the housekeeping that we normally do at the beginning of the episode. We are brought to you by the Trending Topics Network and NEO Sports Insiders. Please rate, review, and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, and Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Facebook.com slash WrestlingCheers, Twitter.com slash WrestlingCheers, and Instagram.com slash WrestlingCheers. Email if you so choose as dire, WrestlingCheers at gmail.com. I'm going so fast, I keep kind of like halfway stumbling over words, but I keep on going. Anyway, we also have a WhatAManeuver.net store up, so you can go over there and... Buy yourself a wrestling cheer shirt or a fight Caden fight shirt as of right now. More designs to come eventually. And like I said, we will be talking about Dropkick Diabetes 4. I'm such a fantastic professional at this. As, as I'm talking, I accidentally exit out of Facebook where I'm reading about this particular show. I had, had the, I was so far ahead. I was like, I have the website pulled up and they have a, a great website for this show that you can find Dropkick Diabetes Ohio dot Weebly dot com as I procrastinate and well not procrastinate I stall a little bit kind of the same thing uh, to pull that back up so we can get all the information to you that it is Sunday July twenty second like I previously stated Dropkick Diabetes four doors open at four p.m. bell time is at five advanced tickets for the first two rows are twelve dollars and standard seating is ten dollars but the day of the show. The first two rows will be $15, and standard seating will be $12. Like I mentioned, you can get those advanced tickets at dropkickdiabetesohio.weebly.com. And this will be in Lisbon, Ohio, at the Guilford Lake Grill, 7094 East Lake Road, Lisbon, Ohio. And all the money raised will be donated to Akron Children's Hospital in the name of Timmy Galchik and Katie Jones. There will be a special pre-show at 4.30, and there are a list of matches that we're going to get. One pre-show match will be Buddy the Bulldog versus Vinny Maverick. Other matches that we'll see are Sean Phoenix versus Ryan Burke. The Katie Jones Tag Melee, which will consist of Hollywood Couture versus Marino and Jinx versus Stone and Jocelyn versus Platinum Throne. And we also have Matt Cross versus M.V. Young and the Timmy Galchek Battle Royal, which actually the the, the Battle Royal was changed recently because uh, the name is a bit of a, a bland sound to it. So it will be the Timmy Galchek Transformers Turmoil, which since recording the interview segments, that has that has since changed now. Little bit of uh, background that I think I mentioned on both of the segments, so I don't want to mention it too much. But at the end of last year, I was officially diagnosed as a diabetic. And some people know this, some people don't, but it's something that runs in my family. My mom has it, my grandmother has it, or had it until she passed away in 1999, you know, basically because of being a diabetic. 
One thing you will hear is I don't like to call it diabetes. I, I rather say someone's a diabetic. That's my own personal stance on. I don't care what anybody else says. I just, it, to me, it always sounded a little bit weird, but it was right around that time that I'm going through all this and, you know, officially going to the doctor and getting medication for everything that this show popped up. And having the platform that I do and, you know, last year previewing, you know, Dropkick Addiction, a show that I had always known about and then finally went to the year before. So that was uh, in 2016. I finally went. So 2017, I helped promote it. And we'll do more with it most likely in 2018. I haven't planned that far ahead, but it's... Charity shows, I do love seeing them. So having, like I said, having this platform, I was like, okay, I want to do something with this. And I waited I waited a couple months before I said anything to the guy who runs it, Kevin, or at least the guy who runs all the social media, uh, at least at that time too. So I wanted to not only help promote the show, but we will be live in attendance, live tweeting and doing what we can for the show. And it means a lot to me to see something like this. Now, granted, like I know I don't have you know juvenile type two. Because I, I got I got it as an adult. It's called adult of onset of diabetes. Like, it's my fault, which I, I totally understand. But, you know, to give back, like, I, I knew people growing up, too, that were a diabetic. And it's cool to, to have something like this. And, yeah, so nothing much more than I can say that's probably not going to be said later on. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of programming notes for these, this particular episode. I sat down with Flying Ryan Burke. I believe it was back in, I want to say May, and we had our conversation, so that's going to be the first part of the episode. And then just recently, about two weeks ago, I sat down with Kevin, and we finished the rest. Now, I believe in between certain things have changed. I don't think we touched as much on it with Ryan Burke, but I think there's enough. We can definitely talk about his match, which has not changed. And when Kevin comes on, we talk about a lot of the changes and everything going on. If if you don't have anything to do on July 22nd, which is a Sunday, come out to the show. It's for a good cause. I can't promote that enough because I know it's going to be a big, maybe a little bit to some, an independent wrestling weekend. I know next week we're going to talk about OCW and the Buzzbin show, which is going to be on the 20th. And then on the 21st, there's, I know there's two shows going on in the area just off the top of my head. I mean, there's probably a couple more, but there's going to be OCW running at the Mogador Fair. I mean, it's a fair show and you're going to get kind of fair show matches, but it's a free fair as is. And the show itself is free too at the, at their, at the fair. So a hundred percent free. It's something that I like to go to go do. And then there's NEW, Northeast Wrestling, always runs the Honing Valley Scrapper Stadium, I believe it is. I went last year, but I didn't go to the actual show. I just did the pre-show stuff and, you know, met the wrestlers I wanted to meet, get some autographs and pictures, all that kind of stuff. So instead of going this year, I'm going to Magador, but I know that's a big thing too. And that's roughly the same area, but you don't have anything to do on that Sunday. Come out and enjoy the show. And I'm... I'm like I said, I'm really looking forward to this. It's going to be three, three days in a row for wrestling for me and not just me, but my girlfriend too. She's going to be coming along and she, she likes, I mean, she loves OCW and she doesn't know what to expect from this one, but it being a charity show and all that, I think she's going to be really, really excited to see it. So like I said, come out and support a good cause. I can't hammer that home enough and you're going to hear it more. Sorry to repeat myself. This is the last bit I'm recording before it gets released. So I obviously recorded everything you're about to hear earlier on. So that's going to be coming up now. So let's get into first. You're going to hear me sitting down with Flying Ryan Burke and then with Kevin, also known as Kip Page, independent wrestler. So I just call him Kevin. That's what I know him as. That's what he's on my phone as. So let's, uh, let's get to that. This is Chuck the Truck Morris, and you're listening to Wrestling Cheers. And we are back on the podcast, and this is, like I've said before, it is a special episode where we're going to be talking about the upcoming event from, not really a company, but just uh, Dropkick Diabetes 4, and my first guest of this two-part half to half episode is none other than flying ryan burke how's it going ryan good how you doing thanks doing, for having me i'll do the pleasure to have you on especially on something like this talking about a cause that's so good so close to my heart and uh first i want to start is 
Like, you've been wrestling for how long? Uh, 10 years now. 10 years, wow. And, like, I know early on I caught you. Actually, it was, like, early on even when I started attending a professional, independent professional wrestling, a uh, very short-lived company, Midwest Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Very, very short-lived. That was, it was, like, what, uh, three shows? I, I did three with them, yeah. And then I think they, I thought that was it. Well, there was the three regular shows. Was, right. Those are the ones I count because those are the ones that tickets were sold for. But right. then there were, like, the, the secret shows, which I know seemed to be a big thing. Yeah, they were, while. as far as I knew, it was for, it was, like, a YouTube show that they were trying to do to yeah. to basically hype the, the real events. Yeah. If you want to call them the real events, yeah. or the big events. <laughs> well, it's and also, I think it was to sell DVDs. Right. So you have people right. come in for, like, a weekend, so they do the regular show, and then, like, the next day would be the secret show. So right. So you'd be, like, two DVDs for exactly, the, like, yeah. type of footage so right. you could sell, make more money. Right. I was actually sad that that company, not necessarily went under, I don't know what... Um, what exactly? I know. Well, I know what happened to the owner, but I don't know exactly what caused him to just say, "I'm done." I actually don't know what happened. <laughs> I just, I never heard anything about it again after the after the third event that I did. Yeah. I just stopped hearing about it. So I know he moved to New York. That's I one do thing. Know that, I do yes. know that. I mean, now he's. For those who don't know, it's a wrestler by the name of. I want to get it right because I think it's Ariel Ariel Al- Alvarado. Alvarado, yeah, but. I know he had a. I don't think that's his real first name. And I knew him as Eric. Eric, yeah. So, like, I know he went to New York for a while. He stopped doing everything, and then he recently came back, and and all that kind of fun stuff. But like, that right. was that was like a really, I thought, cool company. I like the. I thought so too. Yeah. It brought a lot of people that sadly do no have no way of coming back to this area. Like one of my favorite was uh, Aaron Epic. Oh yes, yeah. I, I was hoping he would catch fire and like, yeah. book so many more places, but I think Beyond was the closest thing we had for a while. And I mean, granted, he came to Cleveland once. Other than that, like I don't know where, and he's been in this area, and I missed that. That dude was awesome. Yeah, I agree. And that that's the only time I've seen him, yeah. you know, in person. So they also brought. I remember bringing a lot of other different type of characters, and I don't I don't remember all of them off the top of my head because it was that was we're talking. Like six years ago? Yeah, I would say five or six years ago. It's amazing it's been that long. Right. <laughs> now that you mention it, yeah. And for those who don't know, like you normally, I mean, you're obviously a Northeast Ohio wrestler. A lot of, I think you seem to be a lot more Youngstown. Right. With um, Raw. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some other companies? Uh, in Youngstown, um, actually my trainer, Preston Steele, used to run IWA in Youngstown. Okay. Um. Other than that, in the Youngstown area, that's about it. Uh, Real Action Pro Wrestling, like you were talking about, they mm. used to be raw. They're based out of there. And other than that, it's just shows that would pop up here and there. Mm-hmm. I know, uh, what is it, Quaker City Wrestling is popping up now. Yep, I've been seeing them a lot more lately. Yeah, those are, it's a lot of the same rosters, Real Action Pro Wrestling. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the same guys that were involved there. And I think they're trying to do benefits and stuff like that, too. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think the original idea was to start with the benefits, and now, now they're, you know, doing regular shows. Yeah. Doing shows on the regular. And it kind of makes sense, too, because I, I want to say Quaker City might be what's actually kind of involved with right. with uh, right. Dropkick Diabetes Yeah, it's like a, a collection of people yeah. from the area. Yeah. But it's but the cool thing about, I like about this show <laughs> is the fact of there's so much different type of talent. There's like talent that I know I'm normally here out of Pittsburgh that kind of trickle into Cleveland yeah and then there's a few Northeast Ohio guys and right. a couple couple bigger names like Matt Cross and Chase Owens who I mean obviously Matt Cross is synonymous with Cleveland and Northeast yeah, Ohio he, yeah. he does a lot and I see Chase Owens in this area you know a couple of times you know for like Megan and stuff so I feel right. like he I know he's not from here but he he still managed to pop up here and then yeah so seeing him at a different show that's pretty cool and then of course I think the the big names of the show is the headbanger. Yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm I'm curious to see what happens there with them, but uh, you have a match with Sean Phoenix. Sean Phoenix. I was, and I know I'm not the only one who does this. Gets uh-huh. that mix with Sean Blaze. Yes, <laughs> who ironically is going to be at the show too. Uh-huh. So I hope that doesn't screw anybody up. Right. But, <laughs> so yeah, you got that match. Is that this is your first time you're going to be wrestling him? It's actually like. The match has been booked multiple times on multiple shows, but this is the first time that it's actually going to happen. It's shows that have been canceled or... Yeah. So I don't know if the match is cursed or... <laughs> but uh, other than that, we haven't been in the ring together at all, so... And I hear good things about him, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, 
there's wood around us and I'm not close enough to knock on it, but let's knock on wood. Cause right now <laughs> we're recording this at the beginning of May uh-huh. uh, or mid May technically. And we still have, this is going to release in Ju- uh, July. Right. So I don't want anything to happen. And all of a sudden, like, <laughs> there's like, Oh man, they call, they, they had no idea that this was going to happen. <laughs> And it sucks when stuff like that happens. Ironically enough, with um, Midwest, they that first show mm-hmm. I remember was supposed to be oh, Johnny Gargano versus oh I can't I want to say, say it was Dustin Ray's. You might be right about that. Then Dustin Ray's got injured, right? And they made an Aaron Epic, yeah. And Gargano got injured right yeah, before I rem- it. I do remember Gargano was on all the tickets and everything. It was it was his image on there, and then yeah. they found out he wasn't going to be there. Like after everything was released. Well, because it was um, it's not that like his fault that wasn't going to be on it. He he had that back injury, right? Right. Yeah. With uh, Dragon Gate, or was Dragon Gate Evolve? Uh, tomato Tomato. At that yeah, point, it yeah, seemed to be Tomato Tomato. Right. But I remember that whole big thing. I remember being in Philadelphia and. He had to pull out a bunch of shows right around that time. This yeah. was talking like just a couple, like a week or two before. Uh-huh. So that it ended up being, I'm trying to remember who filled in, really jogging my memory here. Uh, <laughs> Aaron Epic and. I have trouble remembering which show was which, to be honest, but I do remember he wrestled yeah. Bobby Beverly, maybe. What was that, Bobby? What I don't know that? if it was on. No, that, that was, uh, I think that one was later. It might have been. Because I remember. Those those guys having a great match. Um, side note too, Justin Maine. Justin Maine. Wasn't, yes. it, well, he wasn't. It wasn't in that match, but I remember him being in those. That's the first time I ever heard of him. And that's who I worked with there. Yeah. 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 I love that character. That was a great character. But um, I agree. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the other person. It was. It wasn't Ricky. Shane Page. Ricky. Uh, it was him and Eric Cannon. I remember, yeah. I think, on that first show. I'm going to have to just go home and look at the DVD. Yeah. Like, I, have the, I have the DVD I have from the DVD that show. I have the DVD, I can't even think of and it. And it's, it's been a while since I threw it on. But anyway, let's, let's go back to Dropping Diabetes uh-huh. and you in your match versus Sean Phoenix. Right. So like I said, you this has been a match booked many, many times. Right. But you said, like, it... Like, what were some of the reasons, like, why? Like, uh, like I said, shows being canceled oh, and yeah. things like that. Uh, we're actually... Uh, booked against each other uh, a few months back for another benefit show that fell through. I'm not sure why. I don't know the details of it, but yeah. it was kind of weird that this one was announced and then it's the same match again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so like I said, I'm looking forward to it. I hear good things about them. Yeah. So. And this was one of those matches that was announced. I think one of the first actual matches announced. I think it was the first one. Yeah, because I know it's been a lot of well, like either this wrestler's going to be here, this team's going to be here, right. and all, all that kind of stuff. Right. So, and as of right now, there's kind of like a a mystery cloud over certain aspects of the show. But uh-huh. I know, like we do know that you have that match. Yes. And you said this isn't your first. Oh, well, this well, this being the fourth one, you've told me beforehand that this is your. You've I, been to all of them. I do. I do believe I missed one of them. Okay, you think you missed one now? Yes. Okay. I have. I have trouble remembering all of them, but I think uh, they had one with. Uh, abyss was there okay um i can't remember the other names maybe shane douglas but that's the one i wasn't a part of okay i, me- I remember hearing about that one mm-hmm. but i don't maybe for some reason i couldn't go or, or right whatever. yeah that that's the one i missed so other than that i've been a part of all of them uh the guys that are putting it together i've i've been doing shows with them for mm-hmm. pretty much the whole time i've been wrestling so for people like myself, because I've obviously never been to one, like what, like what can I expect, and what can fans expect from the show? Well, obviously, it's for a great cause. Okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> all of us are excited to be there to help out for a great cause. I mean, uh, everybody gives their full effort, of course. Mm-hmm. It's always like that when there when there's a cause involved. But uh, like you were saying, there there's guys from Pittsburgh coming out that you normally wouldn't see in this area. So it's a nice it's a nice mix of people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they have, they have vendors set up all around. So it's a typical merch tables, but then they have, uh, vendors from independent businesses in the area and stuff like that. And people, you know, donate for raffles and all that. So even if you don't really like wrestling, if you want to come and contribute to the cause and, you know, you might win a gift basket or something, (laughs) you'll walk away happy, you know, and 
knowing that you helped out is always a good feeling. So that's all that I do like about independent wrestling. I maybe I don't feel like I don't see it enough, but maybe it's I just don't notice it enough. But all like when you get benefit shows like that, like for uh-huh. example, ironically the the name similarities, but you know with this Dropkick Diabetes for because we're at OCW right now, and that a lot of people here at OCW are mixed in with Dropkick Addiction, right? And those shows, I mean, it's it's also cool because sometimes it's like its own little world, especially yeah, with something. That's like, a good way to put it because I know performing on these shows, like they feel different to me and i don't yeah. i don't really know what it is but there's a different vibe to them mm-hmm. and it's it's like you said it's like a it exists on its own you know it's like its own world yeah and uh like i said i don't know if it's because of what the shows are for and yeah. you, you know you're doing something good and you're having fun while you're doing it i don't know what it is but i i enjoy doing them and then with like because i like it with like dropkick addiction they, they kind of like set up their own storylines and that's yeah, like, that's exactly. only set up once a year right and either you have to kind of remember what's going on but i think the past like year or so they do try to keep it somewhat similar to stuff going on in ocw but it doesn't exactly be every th- single thing right, right so but when you go in there you get this like mishmash of wrestlers and personality that you know you're you don't normally see yeah in an, in ocw or maybe in you know some of the like, more Cleveland based AIW and all that kind of stuff so we get just everybody together it's always for a good cause and it seems like they, they, they do want to have that like oh they want to have I'm trying to remember they did like a match with Ron Mathis it might have been Ron Mathis and Ricky Shane Page which at the time wasn't anywhere else uh-huh. but I think it, that was recently at Premiere like last year Okay, but it was at DBI years ago Yeah, and I could be wrong but it's that kind of it's own like a, the way I put it it's own little island yeah so it doesn't basically you're you're gonna see things that you don't normally see yeah. you know so then like with this one like i said good cause and everything is there anybody on the card that off the top of your head because like, what sucks i don't have every, like everything in front of me right yeah. now and, I, and, I, and i've flipped through like people that you know that are announced for it that you've never worked with or you like or maybe like you want to see again whether it be backstage or even even just Um, watch them wrestle like you mentioned uh chase owens he's somebody i've been on events with him for uh uh what are they called midwest wrestling out in marion ohio yeah and that was before he had gone to japan and everything Mm -hmm. and i mean you could tell the guy was something special then and he was always there to give advice to everybody and things like that but now he's gone off to japan you know he's had a lot more experience so that's somebody i'd like to catch up with again yeah and uh, uh, I always like being around Matt Cross. He's always good to have in the locker room. Always good to have on a show. He's he's like, the dude. You know, yeah, but I say he's legit like the best dude. Right. I, I feel like there's a handful of people in independent wrestling. If I ever hear anybody say that like something bad about, I'm like, and, okay, then you're a bad person. Yeah. When you're saying that. Like if you're saying something bad about Matt Cross, Johnny Gargano. Yeah, I agree. Maybe even uh, Facade. I'm like. Yeah. These, are, these are good people I I've agree never had an experience with them right and I even had like for example Facade when I first started becoming a fan I had another friend who hadn't been to show in years mm-hmm. and he walked up to talk to Facade and Facade remembered him it had been years and I'm just like oh, it, wow. it's that kind of um, connection that you can get with right. some fans or, right. or just maybe great wrestlers with great memory but three off the top of my head that just are absolutely great so like i said if you say something bad about them yeah i agree with all three of those too. yeah because like you're because I've, I've actually heard not direct i'll never say the person's name on a microphone <laughs> is uh someone talked bad about jo- uh, about johnny gargano uh-huh and this was years prior to him being in wwe and all this stuff right. trying to say like he was a he he's this and that and i'm just like uh no <laughs> You're the only person I've ever heard to say anything bad about him. Uh-huh. Probably comes out of jealousy, right? And I hate saying that it's just a fan, but it's like mm, you have that you have to, right? But that's I mean that's just me. Yeah, Johnny's one of those guys. Not to get off subject, yeah. but uh, Johnny's one of those guys. Like when I was first breaking in, I would I heard his name all the time, but I had never seen him. Yeah. So I went to see him at a at a Cleveland All Pro, mm-hmm. and at first I was like, I wonder if this guy's going to be as good as everybody says he is, and he was then, yeah. and he's gotten better and better, and he's stayed just as humble mm-hmm. the whole time. And uh, like you said, Facade, Matt Cross, all those guys are like that. Uh, I still call him Shima, but Zima on yeah. another yeah. one. Guys like that, Raymond Rowe, all guys from oh, the area yeah, who yeah. are having great exposure now, and they deserve it because. Yeah. They're that good and they're humble and they're nice yeah. people, you know. 
especially facade like uh, ironically when we're recording this he made his debut on roh and impact yeah, the like in the week. same week yeah, it's yeah, like that's, wow <laughs> that's a guy who's busting his ass and you know he deserves it so i'm happy for him <laughs> like for a guy like he's just so i'm trying to figure out a way to put out i mean this in, in actually a compliment he's so over the top uh-huh but like i don't know a lot of it's just like how he just all over the ring and everything like he's yeah, just yeah, way, yeah. way over the top, over right. the top rope all this kind of stuff yeah, exactly energetic but definitely a guy that i don't i don't know if many people hate uh-huh. and that was worth that ethic you know being uh going to india and all this kind of right, stuff. Like, right. wow. yeah and i know a lot of people who get on i'm like oh he's botcha mania it's like well if you're doing some of the matches i mean some of the stuff that he does and like, he's you, trying things that yeah. people aren't doing i mean it's <laughs> and like the room for air is so tiny exactly so it's just like he can't be perfect all the time and exactly I, I, he's such a good dude yeah i he's agree definitely one of the top dudes from the area i agree so I'm trying to think of other things that we could talk about for the show because only that's the only thing that sucks is like i said i've never been to one uh-huh and i'm partially going to it just because of the whole uh, me being diabetic thing but it's not right. like oh it's anything against that but it's like that kind of that what drew me in i think uh-huh. i think that's it's also one of those things almost like addiction right that a lot of people know someone affected with it. like even before i i was diagnosed with it i could tell you so many people like even within my own family mm-hmm. that it's 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 very very common i'm i'm going this is like more for juvenile diabetes which is like the worst right. probably one of the worst kinds because a lot of times they can't do anything yeah exactly to, to prevent it like i could have it's it's my own it's my own fault mm-hmm. and genetics didn't help too much with it but <laughs> you know it is what it is right. and i think uh, what was it like when you got first approached about this kind of gig was there was there anybody like in your life that kind of that maybe you thought of like oh uh in my life for this particular thing no but um ever since i've started like i've always jumped on any benefit type thing that i can anything like that because for me i mean i love wrestling that's the obvious thing i yeah. wouldn't be doing it if i wasn't but um i do like talking to people that might come to the show just because of what it's for and they might not be a wrestling fan and you know for that three hours or whatever they can escape you yeah. know and not think about what's going on but whatever's bothering them whether it's a disease or an addiction or mm-hmm. things like that and uh you know, like I said, they they have vendors and everything like that. So there's everybody has fun there, which is the point of it. Yeah, and it's a nice escape for everybody. So and you get to see good wrestling at the same time. So definitely <laughs> get entertained, get to get out of your own head for a while. Whatever's bothering you, you know. Mm-hmm. All right, I think that'll be uh, it for this uh, half of the episode. Any uh, final thoughts or last minute plugs you want to throw out there? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Flying Ryan Burke. Uh, that's that's what I use mostly for the for the wrestling stuff. Uh, I have a pro wrestling tea store at Flying Ryan Burke. And other than that, my other social media is kind of personal life stuff. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so stick to the Twitter and pro wrestling teas and that. And uh, if you're in the area, come check out the show. The like I said, it's for a good cause. I can't stress that enough. Yeah. And uh, everybody seems to have a good time. I like talking to people, especially if they're it's their first wrestling show or. And these are the on side that's like where you get with a lot of these type of shows. Exactly, yeah. Like I mentioned previously with like guys like uh Gino mm-hmm. and uh Chuck about how like fair shows. Uh-huh. Like that how that that'll bring in maybe someone to the rest of the show. But I think with uh, benefit shows, sometimes you get people like oh, well, I don't I'm not a wrestling fan, but this is for a good cause. Right. And it's in my area, you know, I might I knew someone affected by it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna go here and at least check it out. Yeah. And like we talked about with with the kids that are suffering from these things, you know, they they might not have been exposed to wrestling or something like that yet. And now they go to the show and they have a good time and they have something as I don't I don't know if I want to use the word distraction, but yeah, you know, say the disease or whatever is bothering them in their everyday life or they're getting bullied for something. Now they come out to the wrestling show. They make friends there, and yeah. you know it's it's a whole new world world for them. So, oh yeah, I think it's a great cause all around. <laughs> and I always felt like with wrestling too, it's probably even like in our era when we were growing up. I'm mm-hmm. like, it's kind of its own comic book. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's a good way to put it. Like, I think I heard it from originally from like Gregory Iron, who said that. He, his Batman and Superman mm-hmm. were Hulk Hogan and all the yeah, I can see Hogan. that for sure. Yeah, for me it was actually I, I said the same thing, but like I didn't I, like I didn't look up to Batman or Superman. Uh-huh. I looked up to Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Yeah, I'm the same way. So yeah, so I got to watch them every week. Uh-huh. And 
I think always I've said one of the cool things about being a fan is the difference is uh, if you like grew up with loving comic books and everything, like you can never actually meet Batman. Yeah, or exactly. Superman. You can meet people dressed as Batman and Superman. Exactly. Yeah. But you, as an probably as an adult, at least you know that those those characters are fictional. There's th- those aren't real people. But I know that uh, if I can meet Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, which I have, uh-huh. that that was me meeting you know the people I look looked up to. And yeah, that's, that's awesome. Gave me some sort of distraction while growing up, or. I've always had like Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. That Iron Man match was on my tenth birthday. Oh wow! So and Shawn Michaels actually they both were my favorite, but Shawn was like starting to edge Bret out a lot uh, more. That was the same way, yeah. Yeah, and the the, the boyhood dream and yeah. everything. I'm like, I really want this to happen. I'll never uh-huh. forget watching that. And you know, uh, you know, with the whole first the t- time limit draw, Bret walks yeah. away. The monsoon comes out. Like, like no, no, no. Like it's going to continue. And, like. <laughs> But Sean, well, like to me, like I, the coolest thing I ever got to t- when I met Sean, uh-huh. and he assigned a DVD that I had, which was actually a Boyhood Dream DVD. Nice. I was just like, I just want to tell you, thanks for giving me the best uh-huh. day president when I was ten years old and you won the title. Man. And like it was weird because like it's like I know it's predetermined and everything, man, but this is a, the ten year old me telling yeah. you that that meant a lot to me and like yeah, I know you didn't win- with you all that time yeah, i know too. you didn't win it for me but to me <laughs> it was like it, it happened on my birthday <laughs> right. so hell yeah it was awesome that's a great story yeah so uh all right um uh, this was fun i'd love to have you on again sometime and uh I'd love to do it we'll uh, see you soon all right thank you thanks Ryan. robbie star here and you're listening to the champion of all podcasts wrestling cheers and remember if you're not the champ you're just a chump and we are back here on the podcast, this time not live in person, unfortunately, sad to say, but we are uh, on the phone with the guy who runs this Dropkick Diabetes for, or Dropkick Diabetes really in general. We have uh, Kevin. How's it going, man? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm looking forward to this show, like I was telling you before we started officially recording of how, you know, like I was diagnosed, you know, at the end of last year and like this popped up like right around that time so it's hitting close to home and also of which i think i've mentioned prior to this and i'm probably going to mention even way earlier that i just because it's been a while since i've did the everything with robbie and like diabetes i hate i always hate seeing diabetes um that whole thing uh di- being a diabetic is something that's actually ran in my family i'm so familiar with and I think it's it's an awesome cause. I know it's it's more towards the juvenile side, and that's obviously the, always the the bigger deal of it. It's my it's my fault. I'm like this, but I think this is an awesome show. Hey, thank you. Yeah, it's funny. Um, we run into people all the time who are like they say the same thing. You know, oh, this is a great cause. I have diabetes. My cousin has diabetes. My mom. My you know my my niece. And um, I never even realized how big of a, a disease it was until. I met my friend Katie, and then it just, you know, it, it kind of skyrocketed. I started seeing everybody, or meeting everybody who had it. It's crazy. It affects so many people. Yeah, my my mom had it. My grandmother had it. I recently found out one of my aunts has it, too. And that's actually all on the same side of the family. So it's something that happens. And I, I, I know there was, um, I don't know if you heard it, I know, like, Jericho recently on one of his podcasts. I can recently, this was, like, I think late last year, maybe, or early last year, he, I think he was talking to Kyle O'Reilly about it. And I kind of yeah. got, I kind of got where they were coming from, because they were like, oh, there should be a different name for the other type of diabetes, because, you know, that wasn't their fault. And I'm like, all right, man, make me feel like a real a-hole for, you know, screwed up parts of my life. Like, that sucks, man, but, God, like, be gentle. <laughs> right. It's not, I mean, whether it's something that happens when you're young or older, though, I mean, it's, yeah. you can say, oh, yeah, it's my fault, it's my fault. I mean, everybody's body's different. You can't yeah. predict that it was going to happen either, you know? Mm-hmm. And I got lucky with my job, too, because I'm me being a truck driver, I have to do physicals every one to two years, depending. And I've had I've had numerous, numerous physicals over the past so many years. Nothing has ever come up. And then I went in for a physical at the end of last year, and when I did my pee test and they always tested for you know protein and sugar and all this kind of stuff and they were like are you sure you're not diabetic i'm like last i knew no they're like well (laughs) you should have like this is where your pee should be which is on like the very very light end they're like and you're all the way over here to the other end of the spectrum i was like oh well then yeah probably (laughs) i'm sorry to hear that though man 
like I said, it is what it is. And I know I went through a bunch of, I don't know, doctor's visits and they kind of would like talk to me about it. I'm like, do you understand? And I'm like, yeah, I legitimately kind of grew up around it. I kind of figured out eventually this would eventually happen to me. So like, I'm not really surprised just because, like I said, grandmother had it. My mother had it. It's kind of going down the line. And I don't even think I honestly don't even think my grandmother was that bad of a health as long as I've known her. I don't exactly know what caused her, but I know like they they were both diabetic, so I figured yeah, it's bound to happen. Yeah, and it does run. Yeah, it runs in. From what I understand, it runs in people's families. So, so, so we have like we've somewhat talked about already is July twenty second, Dropkick Diabetes four, and even since I've I've spoken with Robbie, there has been some th- things that have changed for the event. You wanna explain some of them just so we, we, we got them off the table? Yeah. Um, so we had Chase Owens originally booked for the show, um, but he got called back to New Japan. New Japan. Um, so obviously that's you know a contractual obligation, so we understand completely. He gave us plenty of time notice, so it wasn't like we were rushing around trying to figure something out. Um, Zoe Sky is doing a Japanese tour as well, and uh, they asked her to extend her stay through August, so uh, we lost her as well um but we replaced her with uh rachel bostic which uh if anybody doesn't know who rachel bostic is she's been um on the wwe she's been in ring of honor and she's been coast to coast yeah um and then we ended up taking rachel with chris larusso uh basically because they have the same kind of background that you know wwe ring of honor coast to coast all that stuff yeah um we originally had uh brandon x in that tag match as well and we've pulled him from it because he is the undisputed ohio heavyweight champion we figured you know why not have him defend the title against somebody at dropkick diabetes Mm -hmm. um his partner was jocelyn and um we replaced him with Jackson Stone, which is an awesome addition because we wanted to use Jackson Stone since uh, Dropkick Diabetes 2, and it just never worked out, and he happened to be free this time. So, um, so yeah, we've got all that. It's uh, that whole tag match. That's the Katie Jones tag melee. Um, so, like I said, we've got Rachel Bostic and Chris LaRusso, Jackson Stone and Jocelyn, um, Marino and uh, Jinx, and then Hollywood Couture's finally like taking the last corner for that with with that match i'm really i'm really looking forward to seeing jackson stone and jocelyn together i've personally never seen them tag together but i know at least their dynamic online is always very funny so i'm i really <laughs> want to see what, what what they they do and I'm, uh, a huge fan of pme and seeing marino and jinx together it's 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 a natural fit. I don't know. I want to say a little more natural than him in Philly, but I I think I'm like all right. That as soon as I see him, like that that's gonna be awesome. That's, I'm I'm interested to see if Jinx comes out dancing to the ring like like PME does, or if he comes out in you know some kind of crazy outfit with dark makeup on or something. You know, it, it'll be interesting to see what side what side they embrace more. You know, or it could be a clash of the two, like. Like a good, you know, matchup in general to where you you take, I'm trying to figure, maybe some like some of the dark makeup, you take uh, sunglasses, add them together. I don't know exactly what kind of music you would have. I, I like the idea of maybe Jinx dancing to some Philly Collins, but it could go either way. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then, uh, so like I said, we have um, Brandon X is defending that title and... Um, as of well, as of the time that this podcast will air, it'll have been posted online. He's going to be defending it against Max Alexander, who is uh, my partner in Dropkick Diabetes, helping to run the show. Okay. So that's a match that, as of tomorrow, everybody will know about. So <laughs> tomorrow of this recording, but by the time you hear this, it's going to be about over a week ago. So right, a little bit of perspective on on when we're recording and everything. Yeah, and there there might be some other uh, surprising things popping up between now and then. Who knows? It all just depends on what Max and I decide to announce or not announce yet. And then uh, how many matches have been announced? Like, I know I didn't get a chance to talk with Ryan about his match with Sean Phoenix. 
and how like how that match never happened. And I'm like, I'm actually looking at the Facebook group, right? Uh, not the group, but the event page and trying to find where all the matches are announced. But I, th- I thought there was more. I could just that, run that through them. Okay. Um, announced so far is, uh, like it, like you said, Ryan Burke and Sean Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Lucha Underground's Matt, Matt Cross. He's going to be wrestling MV Young. Uh, the Katie Jones tag melee, which we just talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, undisputed Ohio heavyweight championship title, which we talked about. And... <laughs> And I announced one. Oh, the Timmy Gauchik, uh Battle Royal, which is um, Matt, Matt, Max Alexander's name is Matt Galchuk. It's his son. Um, his son has juvenile diabetes, so he does a Battle Royal in his son's honor. Okay. And that's not all the matches, but that's, that's what we've announced so far. Okay. So how did Dropkick Diabetes come about? Um, so four years ago, Matt decided to put on a show uh, with the proceeds going to Akron Children's Hospital because that's where his son uh, gets treated. Okay. And he approached me about it. You know, originally he, he approached me because he says, hey, I need uh, workers for this. So I want people to wrestle, obviously. Uh, do you want to wrestle? I said, sure. He said, let me know if you need any help. Blah, blah, blah. I explained the story about my friend Katie who passed away from juvenile diabetes when she was 18. And he says, well, you want to just help me run this one show? I'm like, yeah. The whole plan was, you know, one show, done with it. You know, uh, we got such a good response, got a good response from the fans, got a great response from Akron Children's Hospital. Uh, he approached me the next year. He goes, hey, I was thinking, do you want to do this again? I said, absolutely. Let's make it bigger. And Dropkick Diabetes 2 happened, and then Dropkick Diabetes 3, and here we are in our fourth year, and we're already planning for next year, actually, if you can believe it. That that's that kind of stuff is kind of nuts, but then at the same time, it does make sense because there's so much to to organize, and I know like all the other things that kind of go into it, and the fact if you are doing just one show, it's good to get a lot of ducks in a row early on. Because if you're scram, you're starting to yeah. get everything in like March. Yeah, you have like so many months, but how many wrestlers in general are going to be like booked up? Right. Well, and that's like I said. You know, when Chase Owens had to cancel on us, you know, one he gave us plenty of time. Two, we had so many ideas for matches in the first place that we, you know, we can't do them all on the show. We can't run a show with you know 25 matches on it. So you know, it was easy to figure out something to do in his spot. So I mean, planning for next year just. It's kind of basically taking our notebook that we've had for like the last two years and going, hey, what about this match? We talked about it two years ago. Let's do this one. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Like it it does kind of suck that, you know, such a a huge name like Chase Owens had like he is unable to make it. I'm not saying they can't make it, but, you know, it it sucks that he has it where he has to go back to New Japan and all that kind of stuff. But uh, ironically enough, I know because right after that, at least on the fire, uh, Thomas Adams was announced and I can replace on the fire. And for me, actually, it's weird. He's a dude that I have known for a while, just maybe through wrestling one way or another. I forget how we added each other on Facebook. And I've had this with a couple of wrestlers where we kind of become friends. We get to know each other a little bit, but I've never seen them in the ring. And... <laughs> Uh, I'm actually excited because this will be the first time I get to see a guy like him in the ring. And like I said, we've known each other at least online for a number of years. Right. No, he's he's a fun one to watch. I was actually just on a show with him uh, this past weekend. Um, by the time this podcast there's two weekends ago, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, he's just he's one of those guys that when I first started wrestling, he was okay, um, but you could see that he had like a lot of potential and he. Through the years, I mean, his potential just has grown and grown and grown. He's really come into, you know, himself, knowing who he is and how to work a crowd and how to, you know, work his opponents. And it's definitely, definitely fun watching him wrestle. Actually, ironically, I take that back. I have seen him wrestle. That's how we did add him. But that was early on. It was uh, because I think he did a little bit of extra work, not extra work, uh, uh, Okay, he was basically a jobber for PWO Prime Wrestling. And I think yeah. that's, that's kind of where, <laughs> where I, I first seen him. So, like, in my head, like, I didn't get to see full-blown Thomas Adams. I got to see, okay, you here, know, you here saw he him is. get a three-minute squash. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, I actually get to see, especially because I've seen him grow bit by bit, just even to more of his persona, or maybe you can say tattoos and the, the man bun thing that I know he was doing, like... It's really cool to see wrestlers do that kind of stuff, especially some guy like who, yeah, I, I originally seen as a jobber. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, because he did. He looked like that stereotypical baby-faced, um, clean-cut, straight-edge, you know, generic wrestler. And now he he does. He has his own look. He has his own personality. I mean, he he traded in the man bun for dreadlocks. Now, just yeah, <laughs> seeing them grow like that, and actually coming into you know being somebody instead of just that. You know, here's another John Doe from nowhere, Ohio. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? And then, if I'm correct too, there's going to be uh, vendors at the event. Correct. Yeah, uh, which, um, which one? We always have vendors. We're still looking for vendors. So if anybody listening sells something other than food, no food, no weapons, no illegal substances, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Um, if anybody's looking to vend, uh, they can contact myself or Matt or go right through the Facebook page or whatever. Um, but yeah, we've got, uh, let me think, we got two sweet toys, and that's uh, uh, wrestling figures and wrestling memorabilia. Uh, we've got Marcus the Artist. He does um, lifelike sketches of well, everything, really, but um, he'll be selling lifelike sketches of wrestlers. Um, uh, we've got an American Legion uh, Raiders selling... Uh, bandanas, hats, flags, stuff like that. Uh, geez, <laughs> I know we have more. Yeah, they're all they're all blinking on me right now. But um, yeah, and there, and like I said, we're all, we're looking for more. Anybody who wants to sell anything, um, by all means, contact us. We'll set up something. In the, the four years that you've done this, I mean, this counting, uh, maybe you can't count if you want to. What has been like probably one of the most memorable moments? Like if if you were to. to, to describe this to someone who's never been to it like just something that was a best of moment for you mm, that's a hard one um <laughs> so can i pick more than one okay let's go let's, two yeah, we'll go two all right um num one of them would be uh rhino and tommy dreamer uh using the kendo stick to beat up uh the meekins and wilbur whitlock and uh, the dish there in Davenport. That was a fun one. <laughs> um, that was a nice hardcore match. And then the other one would be probably Shane Douglas at Dropkick Diabetes 3 um, offering to do pictures in the middle of the ring with all the fans for a $5 donation. And he gave us all that money that he made from that straight to Akron Children's Hospital. Yeah, so those are uh, one wrestling related, one you know fan interaction related. It yeah. was pretty awesome. And then, of course, too, uh, we can't forget uh, two WWE legends, you could say, former WWE Tag Team Champions. The Headbangers will also be there. Yes, uh, we haven't announced what they're doing yet. Um, Matt and I have been going back and forth about if we should announce it or if it should just be a surprise. Um, but they will be actually wrestling. Uh, fans can meet them at intermission. Um, I'm not sure about before the show, but definitely during intermission, they can meet them all. And uh, I'm sure they'll take pictures. They'll have stuff to buy, stuff like that. I'm trying to think from a fan's point of view, whether it's something I want to know or not. Because there's always that, that element of surprise, I think, at wrestling shows are fun. Because you might not think something's coming, and then, boom, like, that's how you get, like, really, really cool moments. Right. And that's, like, we, we've, uh, Matt and I have talked about that kind of stuff, and it's, like, I like knowing what matches are going to be on the card, but I also like being at at a show, um, talking fan perspective. Yeah. Because I still go to shows and watch as a fan, even though I'm a worker, too. Yeah. Um, from a fan's perspective, I like looking at the card and going, oh, this is going to be a good match. That's going to be a good match. But I also like being at the show and something not announced happens, and you're like, oh, that was sweet, you know? It's it's kind of like when, because I, I don't know the experience from a worker's point of view, but I know, like, I go backstage a lot of times with OCW before the show, and I'll, I'll be able to get interviews. That's how I got to sit down with, you know, Robbie Starr. And not Robbie Starr, but um, Ryan Burke. I think I've referred to him as Ryan, as uh, like a Robbie Starr. They were a tag team for a while, um, so that kind of screwed up. But no, obviously, for those who are listening, I talked to Ryan Burke before this. But uh, he, I, whenever I go backstage and everything, they, they have the notes up and everything, and I'm just like, I don't want to know. Like, because I want to be able to go out there and enjoy the show. I want to know at least about the show as possible. And the way I looked at it as when I was in high school, I was in drama club. And I didn't, like, take a script out there and, like, show people in the audience before the show what was going to happen. It's it's that – I always looked at it as it's a gradual reveal if you're watching that type of show. So yeah, I, know sure. what's, I know what's going to happen in five minutes or towards the end of the play and all this stuff. And you don't know and you're going to be surprised. It's I feel like it's the same thing with wrestling. So when you have those really cool moments 
and you don't expect it coming, even if you you know that, obviously, when I was at a play, I really wasn't the mayor of a town, just like with these wrestlers. We, not to get too smarky, but it's like we all know it's a performance. So if you don't know everything right. that's happening, so especially like moments like that, whatever they're doing, it's, I'm guessing, especially with two with, you had such big impacts of your special guests like that at two and three that I think the headbangers or whatever they're doing, it's going to be awesome. So you already know they're going to be there. They're going to be involved. So it's, Hey, just surprise me. Yeah. I mean, that's how I look at it, but I know that Matt likes announcing stuff to get people excited about it. I mean, if I just say, Hey, the headbangers are going to be there and they're going to be in action. You know, I feel like that's enough to like, if I was a fan, I'd be like, Oh, I want to go see the headbangers. Yeah. You know, I don't think they've been in Ohio. I, and I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think they've been in Ohio since they were in the WWE, you know? So fan perspective, I'd, I'd be all about it. At least they haven't been in this part of Ohio since I've been a fan. Maybe Southern, maybe uh, Western, but not not Northeast. I've not heard of them anywhere. So th- that being kind of a, a really highlighted name to be in this. So if anybody's a fan, yeah. like it's definitely a reason to show up. I mean, and... And fan point of view, once again, um, first match I ever saw was that uh, that I saw and I was like, oh, I want to do this. You know, I want to wrestle was the Headbangers versus the Godwins. Okay. So from a fan point of view, that that's a big deal to me. <laughs> you know, Ironic, like, I'm not a huge fan of them, but ironically enough, when I think of a game like Warzone, I think of them <laughs> because I remember, I don't know whether I was using them a lot or just like seeing them on the game. Like those are like, that's like one of the handful of wrestlers I think when it comes to that game. Yeah, and they, I mean, with the skirts and everything, is it, it was something different because you had, I believe, I know Stone Cold was in that game. Yeah. Mankind was in that game. and But yeah, I do remember, I remember using the Headbangers a lot in that game. Um, is there anything else that the, that fans should know about, about a show like this? Because... Like I've, I'll hammer home any with any type of show, like this, especially this. Like it's it's definitely for a good cause, and I think if you like independent wrestling in general, like even if you don't like the headbangers, like there's a lot of good people, and it's for a good cause to come out. Like actually, for this whole weekend, I have a full weekend of wrestling booked: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So to me, it's like hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, like you said, it is for a good cause. Um, any time we can do a charity show, um, I, I love doing charity shows as a worker. Um, donate your time to them and everything. So um, on top of it being a good cause, on top of it having celebrity workers or wrestlers there, um, the guys that are going to be performing are doing it um, out of like the goodness of their heart. Basically, like think of it like they're donating their pay to the Akron Children's Hospital. And they still go out there. They still put their bodies on the line and put on a hell of a show. And uh, they're doing it, one, for the fans, two, for Akron Children's Hospital. So it's like one of those things that I feel like if he, it from – Again, from a fan's point of view, knowing that that's what the wrestlers are doing, I, I'm more likely to go and support that show, that cause, mm. because they're doing it for nothing. You know, yeah, we all like to get paid, but they chose to do it for nothing. And I think that's really, really noble, really awesome. And like I said, I mean, I've done, I've done plenty of charity shows. I'll continue to do charity shows as long as I can. And I love seeing the fans come out and support whatever that charity is. doesn't matter if it's cancer. It doesn't matter if it's addiction or diabetes. You know, it's just awesome to know that they're reacting to something we're doing for someone else, something bigger, you know? Yeah, the the fact that it's for a good cause and it's, it's going to be a good show on top of it is, is even better. Uh, there's a lot of people, just workers and everything that I trust that they're going to put on a good show. Even the ones that I don't know, I know, I kind of know through reputation through other people or other shows that I maybe didn't make get, get to make it to, but I've, I've heard good things about. So, you know, like I, like I said, even when I first heard about this, I mean, it's, it's definitely a, a very, very good cause. And obviously, if it's on its fourth show, that's kind of a sign of this is trustworthy because if it, it was criminal, then you wouldn't you wouldn't be on a four because people would be like, no, they, they just took our money and didn't give it to anybody. Right, right. Now, you can go to Akron Children's. I'm sure that they will show you receipts or whatever. Um, we've donated uh, a little over $11,000 to the hospital by uh, as of the last show. Wow. So, and that's not counting everything. For yeah, I, wow. I, I can I can vouch for the fact that I mean, obviously, I, I should be able to vouch for it that <laughs> the money all goes straight to Akron. Oh yeah, 
So I, I, I think that pretty much does it. We've talked a lot about this. Um, anything that the fans should know, just, uh, anything else about the card, I should say, in general, I think we've we've touched on like a lot, everything that's, that's kind of known. Um, really looking forward to the to the the big tag match, getting some of those people in the same ring together. Just like I even said, like a tag team like Marino and Jinx, how they're going to work together. I'm very very curious, and um, should be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> And then, like, there's the Battle Royal, and then, obviously, we talked with, not Robbie, we talked to Ryan Burke uh, <laughs> about his match with Sean Phoenix, so. Yeah, um, but yeah, uh, the only other thing I can think of is, I'm going to plug our website, uh, it's dropkickdiabetesohio.weebly.com, mm-hmm. um, all the information of the show's on there, um, you can buy tickets on there. If anybody wants to be a sponsor, they can do it through the website. Anybody who want to just donate money, um, they can do that through the website also. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing everybody out there. It will definitely be a fun show. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Thank you. This is the made man, Gino DeCapo, and you're listening to Wrestling Cheers. Capiche? All right. It's time. I got to go home, so I got time to wrap this podcast up. Um, last week, I listened to... Gregory Iron on the Stone Cold Steve Austin show. Friend of the show, I say I would ask everybody if you can go listen to that. You probably already have Stone Cold Steve Austin, big name in podcasting. I don't need to tell you to go listen, but as a friend of the show, um, kind of a, a little bit of a friend of mine, like if you don't give give a try, because hey, I knocked out all the big wrestling podcasts out of my life. I was getting tired of interviews from the same old people and like certain people that like Jericho and like I know Austin, those two in particular, they do interviews with. I didn't care about, but I care about Gregory Iron and it makes me proud to be able to call him a friend and like everything that he's accomplished and just kind of feeling pride for him and happy for him to be sitting across from Stone Cold Steve Austin doing an interview. That's that's so awesome. I do believe a second episode is coming up later on because he, he told me he recorded two episodes, but Stone Cold didn't mention anything about a second episode later on. But Stone Cold's a smart guy. When he wants some time off, he banks some episodes up, and then he just does the, interview, uh, the, the interviews, the intros and outros, and the, and he's done and all the, the ads too. But anyway, this isn't that podcast. Go check it out. Uh, support a uh, good friend anyway. But back to supporting good friends. We're talking about Dropkick Diabetes 4 and... It, it, I mean, it literally is time to wrap this podcast up and just to go over all the information that you're going to need one more time. And you can get all this information at dropkickdiabetesohio.weebly.com. You can find them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Really easy to find. The, um, a lot of the, the things you would need if you're on Facebook, they have an event for Dropkick Diabetes for Not much on the fan page itself, but the actual event page is always popping off with announcements and whatnot so you know we're gonna have live pro wrestling on sunday july 22nd 2018 doors open at four bell time is at five with a special pre-show at 4 30 tickets can be purchased in advance from the website that i mentioned dropkick diabetes ohio.weebly.com first two rows are twelve dollars and standard seating is ten dollars and that's if you're coming to the show with money and buying your tickets at the door, they are first two rows are 15 and standard seating is $12. And that is at Gulford Lake Grill, 7094 East Lake Road, Liz Ben, Ohio. This show is going to feature the headbangers and many different local independent wrestlers. Some of the highlighted matches are pre show match Buddy the Bulldog versus Vinny Maverick, the Katie Jones tag melee, Hollywood Couture versus Marino and Jinx versus Stone and Jocelyn versus Platinum Throne, Sean Phoenix versus Ryan Burke, Matt Cross versus MV Young, the Timony, yeah, the Timmy Gulchik Battle Royal, and I forgot to mention this in the opening, uh, pardon, but a Captain's Orders match, Wilbur Whitlock's Open Challenge with the Captain, Darren Davenport. We hope to see you there. We're going to be there to support this great show. And if you want to support this great show, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, facebook.com slash wrestling cheers, twitter.com slash wrestling cheers, and instagram.com slash wrestling cheers. Email, if you so choose a desire, wrestling cheers at gmail.com. We have a whatamaneuver.net store where you can buy a wrestling cheers shirt and a fight Caden fight shirt. 
And also those designs are available in many different clothing options. Please head on over to wherever you're listening to this fine podcast and rate, review, and subscribe if you haven't already done that. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, and Podbean. Rest and cheers. Podbean.com and check out all of our friends on the Trending Topics Network, such as All Beer Inside, Eurovision Showcase, Old School at the Movies, and Chill and the 450 Podcast. Check out our podcasting friends, such as the Chris Clems Cavs Cast, Wingcast, a wingman podcast with Steve Guy, Let the Hate Flow Through You with Jeremy Shear and El Hordano Diablo, Pod Van Dam, Adults, Benefits of Podcasting, Center Stage, that's S-E-N-T-A-R Stage, Super Fantastic Podcast, Road Home from Wrestling, Kick Out at Two, The Indie Cast, and Marks with Mikes. Check out our other friends that don't do podcasts, The Thrift Store Jobber, Rebel Life Media, Set Tab Photo, Ringside Shots Photography, NEO Sports Insiders, and Moy Boy Designs. That will do it for us here on Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name. And we're all here to drop kick diabetes. Later. Making your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. When you want, you get a Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name And they're always glad you came You're a fake way of dancing Rose are all the same You're a fake way of dancing